In today's video, we're going to, to review the difference between resolution bandwidth and video bandwidth in a spectrum analyzer. Now, some time ago, uh, I did a video on the basics of spectrum analyzers, and we used this block diagram to describe that. I'll put a link to that video in the description of this one here, so you can go back and review that if you like. And really, what a spectrum analyzer is, is a swept-tuned receiver. And uh, we've got RF signal coming in. We're sweeping a local oscillator into a mixer, which effectively puts you know, a range of frequencies you know, and slides them through what's called the IF and the IF filters. In this case, these are actually the resolution bandwidth filters, and we'll talk about what that means. The power that's in that filter, detected in that filter, is detected by a detector, and that's essentially what is measured on the screen of the spectrum analyzer is the amplitude of the power within that resolution bandwidth. Optionally, the output of that detector can be filtered before it's displayed, and that's called the video bandwidth filter or video filter. So um, let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail to make it uh, a bit easier to understand. So a friend of mine once described the uh, resolution bandwidth as the eyes of the spectrum analyzer. It uh, lets you control what portion of the spectrum the spectrum analyzer is seeing. So I've uh, got a little system here to kind of show you what I mean by that. Let's say I've got an actual RF environment where there are two signals here at F1 and F2. And effectively we're going to sweep those things through the resolution bandwidth filter. Now let's say we had a, a wide resolution bandwidth filter. As we sweep this through, what we'll do is say that as we go through here, the power that's measured in this filter is going to be plotted out on the spectrum analyzer display. So for the wide filter, as we, as we slide this through, you can see up to this point we haven't seen any of those signals yet. So we're just plotting out essentially the noise or the noise floor at the analyzer. Uh, as uh, part of that first signal starts coming through, that power is being integrated in this filter and measured by the detector, and we see the power start coming up on the spectrum analyzer. As we sweep this through further, we get to the point where this first tone is now fully inside the filter, okay? We're right up about here now. We kind of look at the center of that filter, we're right about here. We keep going, now both of those tones are detected inside that filter. So we're kind of right up at the flat top portion of this, uh, this display. And as we walk our way through, F1 is starting to get cut off, so the power starts decreasing. And as we keep going, we get you know out here, we're just about, uh, all the signals are out of the filter. We get way out over here and now all the those signals are out of the filter and we're back down to the noise floor. So the spectrum analyzer display has got it has plotted out essentially a trace that looks like that. And the fact that you have two separate signals in here is kind of invisible to you on the spectrum analyzer display with the wide resolution bandwidth filter. Now if we switch to use a narrow resolution bandwidth filter like this one, smaller eyes if you will, uh, two things happen. Uh, one is that, remember, we're integrating the total power within this filter. And since we're looking at less total bandwidth, we're looking at less noise. So the noise displayed on the spectrum analyzer is going to be lower. Okay, And as we sweep this across, all right, we start to see tone 1. So we've integrated that power. We can see tone number 1. Tone 2 is still blocked by the filter. If we keep going in between those two tones, uh, we essentially are not measuring any power in there now. And we keep going again, we measure, we got tone 2 in here. And then uh, as we keep going now, we're back down just measuring noise floor again. So the narrow resolution bandwidth filter has bought us two things. It's lowered the noise floor, and it has allowed us to discern at, or resolve the fact that I have two separate frequencies here. It's part of the reason why it's called resolution bandwidth. It allows you to resolve those two frequencies. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the resolution bandwidth concept on a spectrum analyzer here. I've got a signal in here centered at 100 megahertz, and, we can, and we're looking at resolution bandwidth here of 30 kilohertz. Okay, and at 30 kilohertz, I basically can just see this total envelope. There's a little something going on in here, but you really can't resolve what's going on. Uh, if I go in here and start narrowing the resolution bandwidth, we can kind of see it's highlighted down here. And let's make that resolution bandwidth narrower. And as I make it narrower, now I can see 
that in addition to a single tone in the middle, I've got a tone on either side. So the narrow resolution bandwidth has allowed me to see and separate and resolve those tones. This happens to be an amplitude modulated RF signal. And we're seeing the carrier and the two upper and lower sidebands of the modulated signal. You also may have noticed that the noise floor dropped. Let me bring the resolution bandwidth back up again. Okay, we see how the noise floor has come up. If I go narrow in resolution bandwidth, see the noise floor drops with the narrow resolution bandwidth. You'll also notice that the sweep speed has gotten slower. At the narrow resolution bandwidth, you're going to get a slower sweep because the instrument has got to take a you know, sweep slower so it doesn't miss anything and it has to give the narrower filter time to charge. Okay, so that's why narrow resolution bandwidths lead to longer sweep times. Otherwise, we'd use it all the time. Okay, so that's what resolution bandwidth looks like on the spectrum analyzer. So let's talk next about video bandwidth. So video bandwidth refers to essentially the bandwidth of a low-pass filter, LPF, <laughs> low-pass filter, that follows the detector. Because right? as we're sweeping frequencies through the resolution bandwidth, through the eyes of the spectrum analyzer, the detector is measuring that power. So over time, you know, there is, there is going to be noise in the output of this detector. Okay, and we can see that on the spectrum analyzer display, that there's some noise. So the video bandwidth filter, or the video filter, essentially reduces the amplitude of that noise, and it really just has the effect, effectively, of smoothing the output from the detector. So the video bandwidth is really a smoothing filter, in a sense, of the detector output. So it will not have any effect on the level of you know, the noise, like the uh, resolution bandwidth did. It's only going to have effect essentially on the peak-to-peak -peak magnitude of it. So it essentially can smooth the trace out to make it easier to measure where the noise floor is. So let's take a look at that on the analyzer. Okay, looking back at the analyzer at that same signal again, and let's change the video bandwidth in this case. Uh, my video bandwidth is set to 30 kilohertz right now, and uh, what we'll do is we'll highlight that and start knocking the video bandwidth down. And watch really what it does. It's really just going to reduce the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of the noise that you see here. See, as I cut that video bandwidth down, it's not lowering the noise floor at all. It's just changing the variation that we're seeing in the trace. Okay, so again, it can be useful to really help to smooth out things and maybe even start to uncover things that might have been buried in the noise, but it doesn't do anything to lower the noise floor. Uh, such as the resolution bandwidth does. If I go back and change the resolution bandwidth and knock it down lower, okay, that's bringing the noise floor down. I can see that noise floor getting lower each time I drop that. So by combining that and s s changes in the video bandwidth filter, both of those things are going to affect sweep speed as you see. We can smooth things out, get a better resolution of what's going on, and start to uncover things that are buried in the noise floor. So I hope uh, you got something out of that. Uh, give you an idea of what the video bandwidth and resolution bandwidth controls are on a spectrum analyzer and how they affect what the analyzer is doing and showing to you. Thanks again for watching.